Treasures of wisdom, 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 treasures of wisdom. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen. سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله الحمد لله we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank our creator, our sustainer, provider, cherisher and nourisher. For all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send peace and blessings upon his most exalted and celebrated Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his illustrious family, as well as his companions alayhi wa Welcome once again, dear viewers. You are watching the program called treasures of wisdom throughout the globe from wherever you have joined us we say welcome marhaba ahlan wa sahlan bikum to one and all let's commence um after deciding through the park and salawat upon the beloved rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam for the uh, numerous blessings of doing so dear viewers alhamdulillah rabbil alamin our discussion for today is of course regarding the importance and benefits of attaining taqwa piety and it is a very lengthy and vast discussion. I hope that you would be with us from the beginning till the end of the program. For inshallah, our hearts will be saturated after listening to this kalam. Subhanallah, hasbi rabbi, jallallah, ma fi qalbi, ghayrullah, by none other than Rukne Shura, Haji Abdul Habib al Tari, Damat Barakatumul Aliyah. And as we go along in our program to further increase our love and devotion for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we would be listening to these kalams as well inshallah Azza wa Jal um, since I had announced our discussion and topic which is taqwa and specifically the importance of attaining piety taqwa what is taqwa the definition of taqwa and piety so on and so forth how can one attain this and uh, subhanallah how can one attain the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what level of fear should we have as believers dear viewers of Adini channel however over and again in the holy quran Park, he azza has mentioned and spoken about taqwa and piety and it is the truth one of the most important and distinguished teachings of Islam is to attain taqwa and piety. Of course, it happens gradually and this does not happen overnight. A person works through this for it's a process as a person starts to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He becomes very much concerned about his surroundings, so on and so forth. But if we try to understand piety and taqwa from the Holy Quran Park, you would learn, dear viewers of Madani channel, he Azza wa Jalla has warned us about taqwa and piety over and again in the Holy Quran Park. At several places, He Azza wa Jalla has warned us about taqwa and piety. And subhanallah, we would listen to these ayat and verses of the Holy Quran Park and increase our iman, increase our fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen with the ears of your heart from your iman and make niyyah that inshallah Azza wa Jalla after listening to these ayat of the Quran, I would repent, make tawbah, and I will increase my fear for my creator, Allah Azza wa Jal. Especially for the youth and the young children, dear viewers, it's important from a very little age we instill this type of fear in their hearts so that they are always aware of this fact that Allah Azza wa Jalla is watching them. They are being watched, they are being monitored, they are being seen. And this is the condition of every human being. He Azza wa Jalla states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. O believers, fasting has been made obligatory upon you, like it was made obligatory upon those before you that you may attain piety. 
Now in this verse which is in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 183, dear viewers of Madhini channel, we learn that subhanallah, taqwa has been declared as the objective of fasting. Allahu Akbar. Taqwa is a wonderful act of worship without any doubt. It is the essence of all virtues and good deeds, dear viewers of Madhini channel. And it consists of countless blessings and virtues which is beyond our imagination. Aap ye yaad rakhein ki taqwa is a sign of the friends of Allah Azza wa Jal. Hai hai hai. Ye Azza wa Jalla states in the Holy Quran in Pak Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. Yani the friends of Allah are, who are they? Those who have believed and practiced piety. Allahu Akbar. By strictly following the Sharia, they practice piety. This is in Surah Yunus. Furthermore, in the court of Allah Azza wa Jalla, a muttaqi, a pious person is the highest rank, dear viewers. You are not judged by your clothes. You are not judged by the cars you drive. You are not judged by the lavish homes we may dwell and live in. But rather, he Azza wa Jalla judges each person amongst us who is most pious, dear viewers. He states in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Hujurat, verse number 13, إِنَّ أَكَرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Indeed, the most honorable among you, according to Allah, is one who is most pious among you. Allahu Akbar. So, once again, we have learned, dear viewers of Madhini channel, subhanallah, the one who is most pious among us has that maqam in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person is judged by the level of taqwa. This is the standard of excellence, not what we use, not these materialistic things, after which when we see, we judge a person, how pious he must be, how good he must be, how humble he must be, how good his characteristics must be. Allahu Akbar. These assessments are done after you monitor and you assess the piety and taqwa of a person. Allahu Akbar. In Surah Al Jasiyah, He Azza wa Jalla states, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Wallahu Waliyul Muttaqeen. And Allah is the friend of those who fear. Allahu Akbar. He Azza wa Jalla is the friend of those who fear. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala loves those who are pious. This is your objective in this dunya to attain Allah Azza wa Jalla's qurb. Piety is that transportation and conveyance which takes you closer to the Almighty, which connects a banda to the Creator, dear viewers, to His Rahmah, to His mercy. Allahu Akbar. He Azza wa Jalla states in the Holy Quran, Inna Allah yuhibbul muttaqeen. Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jalla is pleased with the pious. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So, taqwa without any doubt, is the best provision for the journey to the hereafter. If you want to be successful in the Akhirah, taqwa is obtained in this dunya. He Azza wa Jalla states in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 197, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّاتِ taqwa That the best provision is piety. Allahu Akbar. The best garment for a man is taqwa, which along with faith in iman and righteous deeds, modesty, Allahu Akbar, and, and good akhlaq, good manners, protects his spiritual as well as his inner self from the devil, from shaitan. Allahu Akbar. So, beautifying his personality. Regarding this, he Azza wa Jalla states in the Holy Quran Ipaq that we should beautify our akhlaq, our personality. He states, he states, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Walibasu taqwa, zalika khayr. The garment of taqwa, the garment of piety, yani faith and, and good character, that is the best. He Azza wa Jalla states this in the Holy Quran Ipaq. He grants the pious individuals, those who fear him, nur and light, which differentiates between the truth and falsehood. It is the criterion for a person to differentiate between good and bad. And aside from this blessing, the one who has taqwa and piety, the misdeeds of the pious people are pardoned. Allahu Akbar. Allah forgives those sins that they commit and they are blessed with forgiveness because He Azza wa Jalla states in the Holy Quran, 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تتقوا الله يجعل لكم فرقانا ويكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويغفر لكم والله ذو الفضل العظيم O oh believers, if you will fear Allah, in tattaqullah. O oh believers, if you will fear Allah, so He will bestow upon you that criterion with which you may separate the truth from falsehood. And He will remove your misdeeds. And He will forgive you. And Allah is extremely bounteous. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. So once again, dear viewers of Anandini channel, we learn that He Azza wa Jalla will bestow a person with that quality that after he attains taqwa, then he will be able to judge, differentiate between wrong and right, between right and wrong, between haq and batil. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla will bless him with the sifat and quality that he will know where to draw the line. Why? Because he has taqwa. When pious people are faced with difficulties, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a gateway of salvation for them. He also bestows marvelous sustenance upon them from the sources which you and I and no one can ever imagine. Because he Azza wa Jalla states in the Holy Quran, Allahu Akbar. And whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will create for him a way of salvation. And Allah will provide him sustenance from where he could not imagine. Allahu Akbar. Dear viewers of Madani channel. Now, these are de various ways we have discussed about taqwa, piety, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't fear Allah azza wa jalla like we rightfully supposed to fear Him, dear viewers of Madani channel. And the day we start fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the day our life will come in order. That is the day, subhanallah, we will see blessings in our lives. We will see noor in our lives. We're supposed to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like we rightfully supposed to fear Him. In Surah Al-Imran and in uh, various other parts of the Holy Quran, Ipaq, over and again, repeatedly, fear, fear, fear. Even the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has spoken about fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ittaqillah, haythu ma kunta. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. This is the command of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He Azza wa Jalla in Surah Ali Imran, he states, وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ And fear me if you are believers. Allahu Akbar. He states in, a, in another part of Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِيَّايَ فَرْهَبُونَ And remain fearful of only me in particular. In another part he says, وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ Allah warns you of his wrath. In another part, he says, And fear that day in which you shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have you seen, dear viewers of Madani channel, how he Azza wa Jalla states about fear, about taqwa, about piety, how we should remain fearful of him at all times? Because he will create for us a way and a path for us to escape from our situations. Allahu Akbar. But unfortunately, we are living in such times that we don't have no fear, no taqwa, no piety. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We are most concerned about the dunya. We are most concerned about the wealth of this world. And each one of us are not even aware of what levels of taqwa we have, how much we fear. We have distanced ourselves from the teachings of Islam, avoiding the acts which cause one harm in the hereafter, dear viewers. Avoiding those actions which shall cause taklif and difficulty for you in the hereafter is called taqwa, it's called piety. And the one who does this, the one who practices taqwa, the one who attains taqwa is called muttaqi. Hazrat Sayyidina Sufyan at tawri rahmatullahi ta'ala had said, he said, people are referred to as righteous due to abstaining from things which others do not. So the one who abstains from these things, he is piety, he is muttaqi. Look at the blessings in the Holy Quran Ipaq, about the muttaqeen, about the pious, what Allah has prepared for them, what Allah has kept ready for them. It's amazing, dear viewers of Madani channel. Let's look at the different categories of taqwa and thereafter we shall speak about the blessings of taqwa itself, avoiding disbelief by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jalla. 
all Muslims have attained this and this is of course kufr avoiding disbelief avoiding kufr the one who avoids kufr it means he has taqwa and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen all Muslims have attained this the one who has iman in his heart he does not go back to he does not accept kufr avoiding misguidance alhamdulillah rabbil alameen misguidance every Sunni has achieved avoiding misguidance every devotee and love of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam the one who has iman in Islam in his heart he avoids misguidance avoiding every major, major sin avoiding every minor sin even avoiding uh, doubtful things dear views of Madini channel doubtful matters avoiding such desires which shall take a person to destruction avoiding turning one's attention to others and this is the station of Allah's elect servants Allahu Akbar that they do not even divert their attentions to others what you eat what you dress where you go what you do they have nothing to do they have no concern they don't poke their nose in other people's businesses they are focused in their lives and that is to attain Allah's closeness his qurb now he Azza wa Jalla has instructed to fear him in the Holy Quran Park and we mentioned this before as well and see he says in the Quran Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Walaqad wassayna alladheena utul kitaba min qablikum wa iyyakum an ittaqullah and we have indeed emphasized to those who received the books before you and to you that remain fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fear him Allahu Akbar fear him. So adopting taqwa and piety is instructed in many other verses of the Quran Park as well, dear viewers of Madini channel. The command to have taqwa, fear was issued by, uh, with, with various attributes in the Holy Quran Park. And if we go into that direction, subhanAllah, there are so many ayat, dear viewers of Madini channel. But we will speak about the taqwa and the piety which Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks about, that if a person has attained it, subhanAllah, then his reward on the day of Qiyamah, subhanAllah, is immense, dear viewers. Let's, let's, let's go through these verses of the Holy Quran Park and see what he, Azza wa Jalla, had stated, subhanAllah, about those who fear him, about those who uh, will attain highest levels of maqam in the akhirat. What Allah, Azza wa Jalla, has mentioned about them now. In this verse, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, he states, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَان And for those who fear standing in the majestic court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are two paradise for such a person. وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ Allah, Allah. The one who fears standing in the majestic court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are two paradise. Any jannat, two, jannatun adn and jannatun na'im will be given to such a person. Success in the hereafter, Kamiyabi in the hereafter. He says, Wal akhiratu inda rabbika lil muttaqeen. And the hereafter with your Lord is for the pious. Allahu Akbar. All those matters of blessings and subhanallah, stations being granted to those who have worked hard in this world to attain taqwa and piety. Allah Pak says, and the hereafter with your Lord is for the pious because Allah has amazing wonders prepared for those who fear him, subhanAllah. In another part of the Quran Pak, he states, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Inna al muttaqina fi jannatin wa uyun. Indeed, those who fear are in the gardens of fountains. Gardens and fountains. إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَعُيُونَ Indeed, those who fear are in the gardens and fountains. Peace and tranquility and happiness in the hereafter. He Azza wa Jalla states, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي مَقَامٍ أَمِينَ Indeed, the pious people are in a place of safety. Allahu Akbar. See, help and approval of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who have the, the, the fear of Allah azza wa jalla attain divine help and approval of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this verse he states, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Inna Allah ma'al ladheena attaqaw wal ladheena hum muhsinoon. Indeed Allah is with those who fear and who do good deeds. Those who perform virtuous deeds. Allah is with those who fear him. And Allah Azza wa Jalla will reward such a person. The list continues. These ayat continue. Inna Allah ma'al muttaqeen. 
واللہ ولی المتقین ان اللہ يحب المتقین اللہ از ود دوز ہو فیا اللہ اکبر اینڈ اللہ از وج اللہ از دا فرینڈ آف دوز ہو فیا ان دس ورس آف دا ہولی قرآن پاک ہی سیز اللہ از پلیز ود دا پائس ان ما يتقبل اللہ من المتقین اللہ اونلی ایکسپٹس فرام دا ون ہو فیئرز ہم یعنی وٹ ایور یو ڈو یور ورچوئل ڈیڈز یور گڈ ڈیڈز آل مائی ٹی اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ ایکسپٹس دا ایکشنز آف دا پائس انما يتقبل الله من المتقين فوكس دي اوف يوز اوف مدينه شانل ريفليكت ابون ذيز ايات اوف ذا هولي قران باك ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم انديد ذا موست اونوربل امونج يو اكوردنج تو الله از ذا ون هو از موست بايس امونج يو جودنس اوف سكسس اند سچ كاميابيز اند الله اكبر ويتش از بيوند اور ايماجينيشن دي اوف يوز اوف مدينه شانل اول اوف ذس از اونلي اتين ثرو فيرينج الله هي ستيتس الذين امنوا وكانوا يتقون لهم البشرى في الحياه الدنيا وفي الاخره يعني the friends of Allah azza wa jalla are only those who have believed and practiced piety by strictly following the sharia for them are glad tidings in this life of this world and in the hereafter dear viewers of the channel let's let's turn towards the holy quran e pak allahu akbar let's focus on these on this ayat it's striking upon our hearts reminding us of the fear which we have not with us we fear allah as we feel like fearing him we fear him when we wish and desire to fear him we don't fear him as we rightfully supposed to fear him because this as well is the instruction of allah azza wa jal it is his command in the quran when he says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullah haqqa tuqatihi or you who believe fear allah like you rightfully supposed to fear him so the foundation of taqwa is to first be aware of the matters in which taqwa must be adopted you know hazrat sayyidina bakr bin qunais rahmatullahi ta'ala ali great personality he says how can someone become pious if he does not know what to avoid when you would learn and have the list of the things that you should avoid then only you can become pious The beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam's mubarak routine when the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam appointed a commander over an army that now you are the commander over this army he would counsel him in particular about adopting taqwa and piety The beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam would counsel a person before making me commander of an army he would instruct to him how to behave good and humble towards muslims Allahu akbar The beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam counseled Muslim about taqwa in his final bayan final sermon the companions of Ali ibn Ridwan also advised Muslims to adopt the same throughout their mubarak lives dear viewers is the seerah not before our eyes today where do children fear fear their parents when they got no fear for their parents how would they have fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu akbar we have no respect for each another we have no adab for each another how would this fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come about dear viewers it starts from fearing allah azza wa jalla first the fact that he is the creator you are the creation he has rights over you he has given you whatever you have in your life from the cars we drive to the clothes we wear to the food that we eat to the places that we travel to to the luxuries and comfort we have despite our sinning despite our violation of rights over and again that we have violated the rights of Allah by missing salah by committing evils and by doing a lot of wrongs in our lives yet he azza wa jalla oversees those sins or he azza wa jalla despite our sinning in spite of our sinning he has not taken the ability of seeing of talking of hearing of holding of touching of walking of moving of understanding of breathing all these blessings are still in our lives despite our sinning he azza wa jalla is so merciful focus on these aspects and build taqwa trust me dear viewers the lies would stop the cheating would stop the deceiving would stop the cheating would immediately stop a person would become humbled in his actions in his tone in his talks in his behavior it all stems from fear for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yahi to cheez hai jo hamare paas nahi hai we fear him when we feel like fearing him we fear allah when we are in society because somebody is watching us right we fear him when we in the marketplace because they have cameras everywhere around right this is where we fear allah azza wa jalla 
our fear is seasonal. Our fear is optional. Our fear is when we feel like fearing Him. It's upon our tabi'at. Sometimes it's due to ostentation and showing off. Look at the fear of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. Look at the fear of Hazrat Sayyiduna Yahya alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Look at the fear of the great Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, dear viewers of Madini channel. It would make you and I shed tear. Look at the fear of Jibreel alayhi salam. Look at the fear of, of Mikail alayhi salam, Israfil alayhi salam, Israel alayhi salam. Look at the fear of the, of the Sahaba alayhi muridwan. You will be amazed to learn that we have not even attain 1% of what they have, dear viewers. And therefore today, the destruction that we may face in our lives is due to these actions that we have. Hazrat Sayyidina Dawood ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu wa salam told his son, Suleyman alayhi salatu wa salam, the taqwa of a believer manifests in three matters. Oh my son, having complete reliance regarding that which he did not receive. Dawood says to Sulaiman the taqwa of a believer manifests, it manifests three matters. What he says, number one, having complete reliance regarding that which he did not receive. Number two, being content with what Allah has given him. Number three, and firm patience concerning that which was taken from him. So to have sabr and patience concerning that matter which Allah has taken away from him. A person who is content with these actions, he has taqwa and piety. Allahu Akbar. So, dear viewers of Madani channel, as a pious Muslim seeks to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not, he does not seek the praises of the people, that people must praise him. All of this is to just make Allah happy. May Allah kareem, may Allah azza wa jalla forgive our sins and grant us that piety through which our life may normalize. Abu Sa'id al-Balqi rahmatullahi ta'ala was asked, why do the words of pious predecessors bear more effect than those after them? The pious predecessors would say things, it would penetrate the heart, it would touch the heart. They were such speakers and orators and lecturers and muballighs of this deen that their words would affect and touch the heart of the listeners. So one of them then replied, when somebody asked this question to Abu Sa'id al-Balqi, he was asked, why do the pious predecessors bear more um, uh, wazan and more effect in their alfaz, in their words when they speak? So somebody replied and said, they desired for Islam to be shown honor. Allah Akbar. So yani Hazrat Abu Sa'id al-Balqi, he replied, he says, they desired for Islam to be shown honor people to attain salvation, their brothers to be shown love and compassion and for Allah to be pleased. So we desire personal honor, people's praise and worldly beings. We desire the vahvas and the wonders of the public, of the people. How will taqwa ever come in our hearts? So therefore the pious people used to have effect in their words when they would speak. Because the people of today, through the waswasas of the devil, through shaitan, we are trying to please each another. We are doing it for the happiness of one another only. Our desire, personal honor, and the praise of the people, this is, these are the things which makes a person fall so hard and so fast, dear viewers. May Allah forgive us. May Allah pardon our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, dear viewers. Let's inshallah azawajallah for now, Go for this kalam, inshallah, Zawajal, which will be recited by none other than Rukneshwara Haji Abdul Habib al Tari. And this is my favorite kalam, Hasbi Rabbi Jallallah. It says, Suntehi, inshallah, Zawajallah. It is the hamd of Allah, Azawajallah. And when we do return, we will continue with our discussion. Stay locked with Madani channel. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Allahu ghafoor, Allahu ghafoor. الله رحيم الله رحيم الله يحب المحسنين هو خالقنا هو رازقنا وهو على كل شيء قدير إن الله على كل شيء قدير يا رب العالمين الله الله صل على طه الأمين الله الله في كل ذا
وقت واحد الله الله حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 إملأ قلبي باليقين الله الله ثبتني على هذا الدين الله الله واغفر لي والمسلمين الله الله حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 هو تنها كون هي الله الله بادشاه كون هي الله الله مهر باه كون هي الله الله كأوشي شان هي الله الله سب دلوں کی جان ہے اللہ اللہ اس کی اپنی شان ہے اللہ اللہ حسب ربی جل اللہ 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 ما فی قلبی غیر اللہ 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 نور محمد صلی اللہ 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 راز دل کے جانے وہ الله الله حال دی پہچانے وہ الله الله پھر بھی توبہ مانے وہ الله الله آسیوں کی آس ہے الله الله اس کی رحمت خاص ہے اللہ اللہ سب دلوں کے پاس ہے اللہ اللہ حسب ربی جل اللہ 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 ما فی قلبی غیر اللہ 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 نور محمد صلی اللہ 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 أو الله دي ألبيتي الله الله protect me and guide me الله الله through your love and mercy الله الله حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 Who is the all capable? Allah, Allah, the curer and the healer. Allah, Allah, who is the dominant all over? Allah, Allah, حسب ربي جل الله. Allah, Allah, ما في قلبي غير الله. الله الله نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 أفدر جناه الله الله عالم بادشاه الله الله يركلر بناه الله الله حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 إشت الله دار دمي بوه لرامه رحمة لك 
باش له گناه لرام حیر علی هم اکشم هم سبح لرام حسب ربی جل الله 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 ما فی قلبی غیر الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان ودونو مشرقون كرب هي ودونو مغربون كرب هي تتم دونو أبن ربكي کون کون سی نعمتوں کو جھٹلاؤ گے لارڈ آف دا ٹو ایسٹ اینڈ دا ٹو ویسٹ سو وچ آف یور لارڈز فیورز ول یو ڈینائی حسبی ربی جل اللہ ما فی قلبی غیر اللہ سبحان اللہ دیا فیورز آئی ایم موس ہوپفل دیٹ یو انجوئی دس کلام الحمدللہ رب العالمین آلویز indulge yourself in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Keep your tongues moist with his dhikr. Instead of chit-chatting, instead of talking unnecessarily, um, we should always recite through the park. Take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, every day try to strive and uh, rectify yourself because on a daily basis, a mu'min, a believer works with his taqwa and piety. You know, Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha had mentioned that nothing had ever amazed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Nothing ever brought him into the state of amusement except for the taqwa and piety he would see in people. Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful hadith, dear viewers. What a beautiful narration. Subhanallah. Today, we see other things <clears throat> which we may not possess ourselves and that takes us into the state of amazement. It takes us into the state of wishes and desires. I wish I had this. And sometimes we desire the worst for others because of these carnal desires that we have, dear viewers. It is taqwa and piety which separates a person from all these evil desires and thoughts that may come to the mind because this is the effect of taqwa. Allahu Akbar. You know, I want to mention this beautiful advice of a person. A person wants to ask a righteous man, pious man, ki mujhe kuch advice ata kare. So the latter said, you are like an individual who fell into dirt. You're asking me for advice. So the advice given was to that person, you are like an individual who fell into dirt, yet he approaches a perfume seller asking where perfume is. He replies, Go buy soap and then wash yourself and your clothes after that come back and apply perfume. You are the exact same as this. Your nafs is soaked in sin. The advisor says to the questioner, your nafs and your desires is soaked and drowned in sin. So he says, take the soap of regret and the water of repentance and place them in a vessel of fear and hope. Allahu Akbar. Wash your outward with these to purify yourself from the dirt of crime and betrayal. And then he says, go to the bathhouse of righteousness and bath yourself with the water of truth. Then come to me. I shall apply the perfume of recognition to you. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So in the hadith that we had recited earlier, Ittaqillah haythu ma kunta. Fear Allah Azza wa Jalla wherever you are. This highlights how Allah Azza wa Jalla knows our inward and outward state. Ham jahaan pe bhi hoon. Allah me dekh raha hai. He is the creator of this planet, this universe. This world, dear viewers, what we have in our hearts is not hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this means we should and we must fear Allah Azza wa Jalla whether we are alone or being showered with bounties and blessings, or facing intense trials. Chahe hum achhe din dekh rahe hoon, ya aise din dekh rahe hain, jis mein hamare paas wo ni'matein, wo blessings nahi hain. In all circumstances, we should, our aim should be avoiding to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should avoid earning the wrath of Allah azza wa jalla. In all circumstances, Taqwa, taqwa, taqwa should be our mission, dear viewers of Padini Channel. 
Allahu Akbar. But how do we increase this way of fearing Allah Azza wa Jalla? We don't fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala simply because the the cliff of this world, the problems and situation of this world makes us forget Allah Azza wa Jalla. But when you recite the Quran. When you read your salah, these are those things which will rectify you, which will make you pious, as we mentioned earlier. But it is the laziness in the heart. I'm going to start today. I will start tomorrow. I will start next year. I will start next after year. We keep making these intentions, but the dunya has kept us so tied to it, from the richest to the poorest. We all are in search for sustenance in this world we all are in search for a livelihood and we're working so hard for it despite having a wonderful life and enough to survive for the next many years to come without any struggle and strive but to keep up to what you have is what's keeping us away from attaining taqwa and piety yet it is the most important aspect for a believer in the hereafter the one who believes allahu akbar his success comes in with piety in the hereafter the ayat which we have recited in the holy quran ipak so if a community is not heedless of allah azza wa jalla and knows that he is being watched they are being watched then imagine how much of preservation would be afforded to their rights contemplate the views of any channel think for a moment the immense sanitary and peace and harmony and, and and tranquility that we may attain from this the entire community can become a wonderful society if only every home and every individual fears the fact that allah will punish him he will face the qabr one day he will be raised on the day of judgment and he will aft he will have to answer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of qiyamah how would such a person answer now very quickly inshallah azza wa jalla let's go through some of these beautiful uh, 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 i would say stories inshallah azza wa jalla which will reflect and make us think about about these matters in islam as well how our pious predecessors would behave and just a few matters which are very important dear viewers sayyidina fuzail rahmatullahi ta'ala ali a great person now he gives advice about guidance towards goodness so he says the divine fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which makes one fear allah azza wa jalla guides him the fear is like a guideline for him towards which thing towards every goodness allahu akbar towards all goodness which is permissible for us to attain allah azza wa jalla guides a person towards all goodness sayyidina ibrahim bin shaiban rahmatullahi ta'ala alay speaking about the benefit of fearing allah he says when the fear of allah azza wa jalla begets into the heart it destroys lustful feelings it makes one disinterested from the world and prevents his tongue from talking about the world as well only fear of allah imagine that the dunya for which we have been chasing and chasing it is only that one fear that once it comes in the heart of a person wo dunya se phir alag hi ho jata hai look at ibrahim bin adam rahmatullahi ta'ala ali allahu akbar what a badsha what a king he was of his time bas the day his heart had changed the day allah azza wa jalla blessed him with tawfiq and ability he left his kingdom behind he left the world behind he left his luxuries behind the ministers and the soldiers and all those that would be on his light and rift and behind him in his service at all time he left all those luxuries and he spent the rest of his life in allah's ibadah so it is the gateway and the door of wisdom through fear even wisdom is attained dear viewers of adini channel hazrat sayyidina shibli rahmatullahi ta'ala he had said the day when i fear allah azza wa jal the day when i fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i see a door i see such a door of wisdom and admonition which i have never seen before so i see a rasta a door that and the door is of wisdom through this fear i have wisdom and lessons admonition of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that i should keep fearing him i should keep be concerned about my own matters so dear viewers of adini channel we do not have this type of fear and the day we attain this type of fear our our life will come to a our life will be a better life our situations would normalize inshallah azza wa jalla and we shall see the blessings of it in both the worlds but unfortunately as i mentioned earlier this is not our state this is not our condition but like these are the references these are the beautiful accounts through which we are able to listen here 
and taking lessons. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, whenever Hazrat Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam would come to me, he would be trembling out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find this reference in Ahyal Ulum when the beloved Rasul says, Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salatu salam would come to me and whenever he would come to me, he would come to me trembling in the trembling. Allah. And why he would be trembling? Due to the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibreel alayhi salam, who is the teacher of the malaika. It is quoted when the incident of Iblis being accursed, yani when he became a rajim, was occurred, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam and Mikail alayhi salatu wasalam began to weep in the court of Allah azza wa jal. It was inquired, why do you weep? Those angels, they humbly replied, Ya Rabb azza wa jal, we are not fearless of your hidden plan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said to them, Yani Jibreel Islam and Mikhail Islam, be in the same state. Yani never become fearless of me. When Iblis Shaitan, who worshipped Allah Azza wa Jalla for so many years, and his ibadah, his taqwa and piety, which he had at that time, nothing was seen the moment he shown disrespect to Allah Azza wa Jalla. The moment he rejected the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was accursed instantly. Even his conversations was not entertained. Allah did not have any other conversation with him the moment he gave his dalil and evidence that he is made from fire and Adam Islam from sand and soil. He immediately in the Quran Pak told him that he is accursed and he has to leave. And he was kicked out of the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear viewers of Madani channel, can you imagine subhanallah Sayyiduna Muhammad Munqadir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrated when the fire was created, the hearts of the angels began to fly away, started leaving their positions and when the human beings were created, they came back to their position. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his divine plans which you and I have no idea of. Ham aaj ka time plan kar rahe hain ki next ghante mein hame kya karna hai. We have no idea what Allah has planned for us in the next second, what he will do with you and I. Do you have any idea of what will happen to you in the qabr? What will happen to you in the grave when you are laid down there in the dark home? No idea. Then why should we not cry? Why should we not cry? Do you have any idea of when you turn 50 and above? Would you be fit? Would you be healthy? You think you are. Do you know the hidden divine plan of Allah Jalla? No. Then why don't you cry? Do you know our final destination, whether we are going to go to hell or Jannah? No, there is no guarantee. So that should create fear in the heart. Missing so many salahs in our lives should create fear in our heart. Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam once came in the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasalam with tears. Allahu Akbar. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam inquired, O oh Jibreel, what made you weep? What has caused you to cry? He said, my tears have never dried out of the fear since Allah Azza wa Jal has created hell that least I might commit any disobedience and be thrown into hell. Who is saying this? The teacher of the Malaika, Jibreel alayhi salam, who fears Allah Azza wa Jal to this level. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam would stand in salah and the rumble in his chest when he would cry could be heard from a mile away dear viewers of Madani channel. Hazrat Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam would cry so much in salah, out of salah at all times that his cheeks had wounds. His mother had to put bandages on his face. And when he would cry again due to his tears, the bandages would get soaked with tears and fall out of his face. And his mother would come to him and say, Oh my son, why do you cry so much? So dear viewers of Madani channel, over and again, we are reminded never to be proud about what you are now. At the end, we don't know how we would leave this world, what condition we would be in when we leave this world. Because the, the idea is to leave this world with Iman. The Quran says, never die but as a Muslim. And we are trying to protect our Iman for this duration which Allah has given us on this planet. You have 50 years, 60 years, 70, 100. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Spend this limited time of yours in ibadah. Worship Him because this is what you will cash in the hereafter. This is what 
taqwa you will attain in this dunya and that will become the stepping stone for you for the akhirat on a good note subhanallah there are so many narrations dear viewers with regards to the angels of Allah Azza wa Jalla developing fear in their hearts but these comparisons are given taaki hum ye soche jab wo Allah ke farishte hain Allah ke muqarrab farishte hain Allah ke ye paigambaran hain these are the the anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam and these are the angels or these are the pious predecessors the friends of Allah look at their taqwa and piety look at their fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are being watched Allah azza wa Jalla is aware of their actions so they would never cheat they would never hurt they would never deceive others the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam inquired from jibril alaihi salatu wasallam why have i never seen mikail laughing today we laugh hum haste hain to dur tak hamari awaze jaati hain ha jibril alaihi salatu wasallam was asked by none other than our beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that why have i never seen mikail laughing alaihi salam So Jibril Ali Salatu Wasalam humbly said Mikail has never laughed since hell is created jab se jahannam ko paida kiya gaya tab se Mikail Ali Salatu Wasalam kabhi hase nahi yahan hasne se murad of course is not like how you and I laugh is tarah to nahi hai yakinan but to say happiness khushiyan when a person is happy he smiles he laughs this was never it never happened with mikail alayhi salam and jibril alayhi salatu wasalam said ye tab se hain jab se hell was created hum to jahannam ka zikr din aur raat sunte rehte hain sunte rehte hain sunte rehte hain magar it has no asar it has no it has no effect on our hearts dear viewers of madinah channel it has no effect on our minds as well allahu akbar but our pious predecessors the pious friends of allah azza wa jalla the blessed sahaba ali ridwan feared allah azza wa jalla so much itna khauf e khuda itna khauf unke dil mein maujood hai ki at times they desired not to even be humans yes hazrat siddiq e akbar radhiyallahu taala anhu saw a bird on a branch of a tree so he said well done oh bird you eat and drink but there is no accountability for you allah allah if only i were like you and not made a human being so that there would be no accountability fear for allah azza wa jalla fear for that day in which you will have to account to the creator this is abu bakr siddiq who is resting next to the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is the closest companion to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam jab unka ye hal hai phir hum kahan hai where are we dear viewers of madinah channel where are we siddiq akbar radhiyallahu anhu had a slave who frequently used to present gifts to him so one night he brought something for eating for him So he, رضي الله عنه, ate it. The slave humbly said, "Ya Sayyidi, you ask me daily as to where I bring this thing for you, but you did not ask the method about it today. आज आपने पूछा ही नहीं कि where I have brought this and come from. So he said, due to extreme hunger, I could not remember to do so. But now you tell me that where have you brought this food for me from? So Allah Akbar. Now what happens here? the slave humbly said during the pre islamic era yani in the time of ignorance i had treated a sick person by tree by by reciting some uh, invocations you know and that person got cured so he promised me to give me some remunerations for it and today when i passed by him by that place allahu akbar so he gave me this food as a return as a token of appreciation for the cure which he received some time back when i in the time of ignorance gave him cure through the recitation allah akbar so he says alas you have destroyed me siddiq akbar the allah who says you have destroyed me then he put his fingers into his throat dear viewers so that he could spew out whatever he had eaten on an empty stomach but it did not happen so he was informed that without drinking water this muscle would not come out so a bowl of water was brought and he kept drinking it continuously trying to spew and and take out that which he had eaten someone humbly asked ya sayyidi may allah bless you why did you trouble yourself just for a muscle he radiyallahu anhu replied i have heard the beloved rasul saying any part of a body nourished by haram wealth deserves hell more So I feared that muscle might become a part of my body and that part of the body will then go in hell.
Yet he is from Ashri Mubashara. Yet the beloved Rasul gave him glad tidings of Jannah. Allahu Akbar, he is the first Khalifa in Islam. Subhanallah, he is the father of Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. There is no doubt in him being a Jannati. But look at his words, he says, any part of a body nourished by haram wealth deserves hell more. So if the hands grew, the body grew, you are nourished by haram means, by gambling, by casinos, by haram sustenance, then that portion of the body will go in hell. This is called taqwa. This is called fear that he continuously drank water until he vomited and spewed that which he had eaten simply because of this hadith of the beloved Rasul On the other hand, we have certificates proving and showing that you should not go to certain place, do not eat that, do not drink this. Do we have taqwa and piety? So having a Muslim name doesn't mean you have taqwa. Beard, turban, kurta, all these things, dear viewers, is a sign of a Muslim. Hame karna chahiye, sunnati rasul par amal karna chahiye. But taqwa and piety is that which determines the standards and the excellence of one's iman, of his taqwa. This is the criteria of the excellence, the standard of excellence of a person. How excellent is he in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jalla? Not based on the wealth of the world, it is only based on the uh, on the taqwa and piety, how much he does fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us all work together, each family, husband, wife, children, mil kar ke is taqwa ko badhaayin. Bar bar ek dusri ko remind karein ki hum chori aur ghibat aur ye tamam gunahain ab karenge nahi. Mil kar ke nahi karenge. We would not do this together as a family anymore. We would make tawbah inshaAllah azza wa jalla. May Allah forgive our sins. May Allah kareem grant us tawfiq and ability to repent abundantly. Until next time, stay good, be good, do good. Keep increasing your taqwa and piety for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear viewers, keep reciting Dhuri the Park upon. نبي كريم صلى الله عليه وسلم صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم